Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it's quarter to it's quarter to twelve. It's quarter it's quarter two in terms of our sense of where we are in time. And it's still November eleventh, so it's uh, it's twenty three hours and forty five minutes into the eleventh day of November, uh, two thousand twenty one. And uh, just did the observation vlog. It does take a while to sort of deal with some of the deeper notes that I've been talking about. This time we did, we went further into the history of racism, systemic racism, and showed how the imperialism and the classism created by imperialism, this is where uh, uh, your racism emerged from. This is, and this is why it's systemic. It's because it came out of the sense of, cla of class structure. Most of your whole concept of, of communism, uh, and this comes from humanism and so on and so forth, understands the class structure. Uh, but the thing is that the class structure was there in Plato. It was there in Socrates, in terms of the ancient Greeks. It was there in terms of the, the Hindus, the Indians. They have a class structure as well. Uh, the Chinese certainly had a class structure. To understand this, all you have to do is watch Ang the Avatar. Not understand that uh, you will go to the city Ba, ba, ba Sing Se, and you'll see the class system right then and there. This is why the cities had different walls around it. Because there were different forms of class. And you'll see how bureaucracy plays into all this. These systems don't exist by themselves. They exist because they're the apparatchik, the, the bureaucracy comes in and becomes omnipresent. These are the managers. These are the people who believe in micromanaging everything, the tiniest little detail. And this is, this is, what, the, this is what a dictator is. A dictator comes in and, and defines life in such a manner that they are micromanaging every every motion you take in life is now di being directed for the better of society in terms of engineering the social the social system right the social environment there this is social engineering at its finest this is a science not an art and they failed every time that's why there's so, uh, there, there's not a new world order you ask yourself how many new worlds? This is the latest version of it. And then every time you have, every time you have Davos, that's a new Davos. Every time you have a Davos, a Davos, that's every year you have a new LARP. You have a new live action role play. And they come up with these scenarios and these ideas and how great this is going to be, how great that's going to be. IPP, the IP uh, International Panel on Climate Change, that's IPCC. Uh, they produce this same LARP, same type of LARP on their thing, how great the world's going to be under their direction. Of course, all these people get paid for this. They get paid for these LARPs. These are all nerds. They're all nerds up in these upper levels. And of course, everybody kind of falls naturally into their own place. A jock is never going to be a nerd. He's never going to be up in the upper classes. Why? Because the jock spends most of their time parting. They don't hit the books. They're not the bookworm, they have no sense of what's going on around them other than the immediate. The people who form the lower classes and under are the people who live an impulsive life. They don't think about life. There's no form, there's no structure. They have what we call a random existence. And so because they never plan for anything, they can be led around like a, like, like, like a animal who's in a herd. You can lead them around and they can go from here they go, well, from the fidget spinner to the, uh, 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 to the uh, poppet, the, the, the little, you know, those bubbles, the, those poppet bubbles. I mean, before the fidget, before the poppet bubbles, you had the fidget spinner. And people went crazy. You couldn't, you couldn't keep them on the, on the store shelves. You have, you're having, you're having su supply shortages of toilet paper, meat, and other things that are necess necessary for life. But you don't have a supply a shortage in the supply of poppets, the 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 new version of the bit of the fidget spinners. You're leading, you're being led around by these groups who say, "Okay, let's do this, let's do that." And again, it's a it's a bureaucracy. It's not a it's not a, a sort of a uh, oh. A general emergence. It, start, it starts off as a general emergence. 
where they see something become popular, then they want to get in front of it and steer it into their own direction. And this is kind of what you see. The, bureau the bureaucrats are never smart enough to create their own thing. They always have to, to be like a bandwagon. They jump on board to something that already exists, and this is how they become uh, in control of things because they've seen that they, they saw the trend, they saw it emerge, jumped on board, took control, and now they're steering it in the direction they want to steer it in. This is social engineering. This is what it's all about. But most people, again, don't understand this. And this applies to everything, including the mask and everything that's going on today. This is how it works. But unless you understand the history and how things emerge, then you're going to be completely lost. But this takes, it can't be done in a half hour. I do it in a half hour because that's as much as people can take. It can take a half hour and then their mind goes blank. Even up to a half hour, they have a hard time absorbing what I say. And I can tell you, I ask the, when we, I do this and they, and they have con, con, uh, people I know who watch this stuff, we have a conversation. They've lost most, like 90% of it is gone. They can't remember it. And it's just, they, they couldn't absorb what was going on except for 10% of it, so you have to go over it again. The reason why sometimes you have to repeat things over and over again, it seems like, oh, this is boring, we should be moving on. Well, it's because if, if you're doing 30, 30 minutes and people only will retain 10%, right? So 30% is your, is your 100. Uh, you're doing 10%. Uh, let's see, that's... Well, that's an easy thing. This is, that's, you're... you're they're retaining three minutes. You have three minutes of knowledge being absorbed and retained. You would have to get the, to actually achieve the hundred, which is impossible. You would have to repeat the same lecture over again ten times before the person would get the entire thing. So this is where we sit. This is this is how we, in, in general, understand the war, the world, and. A lot of bad things can happen in this sort of sense, in this uh, perspective. And this is why getting people to understand what's going on is a task, but it's also necessary. You have to under get people to understand what's going on, even if it's just to preserve yourself. And anyway, that's it for tonight, and I'll see you inside. Well, it's four hours and seven minutes into the 12th day of November, and uh, I came, when I came in, I did some shopping, uh, went through the Yali Vlogs, the Leroy's, and uh, It's Our Life, uh, had, uh, didn't post anything new, but I did watch, I just watched some of the stuff I, I, I sometimes when I go through things, when I watch these uh, vlogs, because I've got other things to do around here, I don't always watch them in with the attention with, with the attention that I should watch with watch with watch them. Because I'm doing other things. I'm, I do other things uh, as the uh, as my TV is on. This is, they they are my TV. They are my Netflix and so on and so forth. So, um, got off of that uh went on to Kim Possible and just uh, did some more shopping interestingly enough the shopping should come tomorrow by about four o'clock in the afternoon so uh we'll kind of see uh what we have on uh, schedule for tomorrow so uh I'll leave this here for now because I'm tired I'm starting to fall asleep and that means I'm going to uh transition back to bed actually so uh, I'll see you guys, uh, let's see, it should be here, it should be here around, uh, one o'clock, so that's about, um, that's about eight, maybe nine hours from now, although I might come back if I'm hungry enough and, and, and I can't sleep, I'll come back for a bit of breakfast. Anyways, uh, I'll see you, uh for the next transition. Well, it is now 23 hours and 27 minutes into the 12th day of November 2021. I had a large a large, a large delivery today. I tried out a new shopping app uh, that, and I got all my uh, 
uh, uh, I got the sort of the second half of my groceries that I need. Uh, I still need to sort of spread things out, but I got most of it done. Uh, anyways, uh, I am not trying to do the Illuminati thing with the uh, <laughs> with the with the hood on. It is close to forty degrees outside. There is another Arctic vortex coming in, and I've been out here since eight o'clock in the afternoon. It is it, uh, my body is uh, very cold, very uh, and the way you lose a lot of heat is you lose it through the head. I got my gloves on. I got uh, thicker socks and nice boots on. Uh, so the hood prevents heat loss through the head. The head, the head is also one of the key points that you need to keep warm if you're going to prevent hypothermia. But and this is because I'm not doing anything out here. I'm sitting here, and I've got I've had several good airplanes come by, and I use the aircraft uh, to determine the altitude uh, of the clouds that are above me. Uh, and that has to do with the second layer of clouds, the second layer of atmosphere. Because uh, there's actually four. There's a troposphere, and then there's three more layers above it. Then the first layer uh, above the troposphere, the layer we call layer one, we call the troposphere layer zero. So layer one is where a large chunk of heat is, is trapped. It leaks up into, uh, into uh, layer two. But by layer three, it's completely gone. You don't see it there anymore. And what it is, is the sunlight coming in, getting trapped in the first two layers, the zero layer and the one and the one layer. This is why you, you all these people talking about global warming and they're using they're using the uh, surface temperature of water. Well, that's a huge that's the most that's the most incorrect form of temperature measurement in terms of thermodynamics ever. Because Water is a known thermal sponge. A sponge soaks up water, right? Water, like a sponge, soaks up heat and then remits it again. So it's not carbon dioxide that's storing the heat. It's water. And where are they taking their temperatures? On the water. <laughs> They've completely ignored the other signals. They've completely ignored ignored other factors, and are focusing sim simply on the surface temperature on, of water. And it's not over. They just sort of take samplings here and there, and then they average it all together because, well, well yeah, well, it, 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 it's uh, on average, it's like that. Well, the thing is you can't do that. Go look at Planck. What's Planck's black body, ra uh, uh, black body radiation? Heat is not an average because you have a high and a low. What happens during the day? During the, the, during the daytime, you have a high temperature of, of, of whatever it's going to be, and that's usually in the afternoon sometime, between uh, 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when you get your high, even up to the 6 o'clock in the evening, is, it, it, you'll have the high up there. Uh, and then you start, the, the temperature supposedly starts to cool down. But if you in the summertime, if you go swimming at midnight, you'll notice the water's still warm. Why? Because there's still, a, there, there's still thermal energy in uh, left in the pool, enough to heat it up so that it's comfortable to swim in. Go and go and go go swimming in these intertimes at 10 o'clock in the morning and see how warm the water is then. Anyone who has a pool knows this. This is why they have pool heaters. In the, in the, in the mornings and after, in the mornings, before you get to the afternoon, you have pool heaters on. Right? If you want to swim all day long. In the, in the afternoon, in the evening, you turn your pool heaters off because you don't need them anymore. This is Planck's black, black, black body radiation, completely ignored in the climate models. Not there. That's why you can't take averages because if you know it's what's going on in the pool, you know what's going on in the atmosphere, you know what's going on in terms of how water absorbs heat and stuff like that. You're not looking at carbon dioxide. You're looking at water vapor. Completely ignored. Not even a glance. And anyone who disagrees, they're a climate denier. They're like the people who deny the Holocaust. Oh, God, they're killing people. Again, they're working using, using fear. There's no science there. It's just their own feelings. This is what you see with the, with the arguments with the vax and the anti-vaxxers. Both sides are working on emotion. No side. 
has science on their side. Even the, the ones who, are, who have the science on their side, the doctors, the researchers, no one's listening to them. Why? Because no one can understand them. I said, <laughs> my dad, you know, several people that I know who were on the, uh, was kind of on the fence. There was a group of people, one side facts and the other side anti-vax. They got together to watch a sort of a documentary, uh, sort of a, a lecture put together by a, 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 about a, from a medical researcher who was a doctor, uh, had a lot of clinical experience under his belt. And he was giving his lectures to, to his fellow researchers, fellow researchers. This is known as a colloquia or a colloquium. Uh, I used to go to these at U of T uh, every afternoon about 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, all the, uh, uh, the uh, lab rats would come out of their labs, file into a room. They all come up with their co- – they all had their lab coats on. They, 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 they had the lab coats on, and this is what the things that the nerds miss. The lab notes on, the glasses, and they had a cup of coffee. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the look of the nerd scientist who, li- who lives in their laboratory or in their library. And they come into the, they come into the auditorium, uh, and they, there's an announcement of who's going to be speaking – and on what paper they're talking about in terms of their research, and they get into it. And the thing is, is that unless you have an understanding of what's going on in the, and the research environment, you know, look around the room. <laughs> this, they, they turn, they turn, they turn, they turn the room of both sides, vaxxers and anti vaxxers turn the lecture off about 40 minutes into the lecture. They're going, Did you understand anything that was being said? And, both sides know. <laughs> so uh, the science is there, but again, it it never reaches the surface. It never comes out into the public because it's just simply not understood. But the thing is, why would someone who is an insurance salesman and in their average life know anything about medical research? A researcher who does physics and quantum physics, uh, uh, Organic chemistry, they'll know because because virology and a lot of your medical science is organic chemistry. And organic chemistry, in terms of your structure of, of genes and, and and proteins and stuff like that, that's or, that's uh, that's um, uh, quantum physics. It's basically macromolecular physics. So a, a, a physicist, a quantum physicist, and a cyberneticist who models models the human being and models life in addition to the intelligence and behavior uh, doing the organic chemistry is, is is for me par for the course is you know you go into a bathroom and you look at the you, you, sometimes you have to go and I go in other places and you know when I'm visiting houses and you sit down and of course the, the the wife typically has the bathroom sort of fixed up and everything and there's magazines like you know, you know, Vogue and and all these fashion magazines and this magazine, decor magazine. You'll often, more often than not, you'll find a wedding magazine there too. Go into my bathroom. My bathroom, I have quantum physics. The ones I'm reading now is I'm reading not quantum physics. I'm doing. Uh, I'm reading through uh, uh, organic chemistry. I'm doing right now. Uh, uh, li- I'm doing lipids in organic chemistry, studying the structure and the chemistry of lipids. <laughs> That's my bathroom reading. I mean, can you say nerd? <laughs> Anyways, uh, inside for the YouTube stroll, I'll begin again at the Yali vlogs and sort of work my way through. Uh, anyways, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I do have a busy day scheduled. Uh, uh, I do have to do some installation, so I do have to get ready for that and get things sort of packed and squared away and then uh, move from there uh, on out. So... Uh, I will see you in probably around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, for the next transition vlog. A little bit after, uh, I'm in the Yowie vlogs and doing the next set of uh, sort of perusing. Anyways, uh, I'll see you then. Well, it's 23, 23 minutes and 37 minutes into the uh, 13th day of November, my uh, Amazon package came. It was nice. I got my cereals uh, and everything. I got cereal and uh, what else? Oh, yeah. I got Rice Krispies squares. 
you look and sort of see how where you can get your stuff the cheapest. And always, uh, because you have a $35 limit, there's always this sort of space for extra goodies. And so there was enough space uh, in the shopping list for Amazon. Uh, the helicopter. That I could get uh, the Rice Krispie squares that I like. I usually make them myself, but this was very easy, and it was part of the extra space. I had the I had the budget for it, and I think is in order to get the free shipping, you have to have at least thirty five dollars. And well, the the uh, the uh, box of uh, uh, the jumbo box of Rice Krispie squares uh, made the thirty five dollars. So, <laughs> uh, yay for that! Um, I did the work. Uh, in church, and I added the the, the subsystem. I've got part of it done. A problem popped up. This is this is what happens. Sometimes problems pop up. I have the configuration almost exactly the same, uh, but then there was this ground fault hum, this sort of a, a loud buzzing sound that this most most people call. Hey, that's what's that buzzing sound? Well, it's known as a, a ground fault uh, interference, a GFI, or interrupt. It's basically when there is a current bleeding into your sound system, basically because uh, something's not grounded properly, or there's there some form of issue where some form of electrical current is getting into uh, the uh, sound uh, sound system, or one of the cables that is carrying your sound, microphone or otherwise, has a uh, has an issue with it. Now, whereas maybe one of the one of the cables on the inside of the cable, a lot of times it's one cable carrying three or four different cables. If sometimes it gets crushed or, or uh, through old age, like one of the cables was the one I was trying it on is ten years old. It's a, it's a decade old. It's, uh, and people have uh, installed carpet on top of it. It's, it's jammed into places, shoved in places, and basically <laughs> mistreated. And so the, the, it, it caused a problem. So I think the next time I'm going to go. Next Saturday, I've, test, I've tested everything out here. Everything seems to be fine. It doesn't, there doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, I'll be able to go back and say, okay, let's do this, X, Y, and Z. In other words, you plan out your troubleshooting so that when you get to the, to the uh, on, on the bench, so when you get to the actual environment uh, that you're working in, you have an idea or a blueprint on how to resolve or troubleshoot various different issues. And that's sort of what's going on now, and you know, I, I came back very tired. I was, I still am. Uh, I have a hard time keeping my eyes open, uh, but I am going to go back and do the YouTube stroll. I need to sort of push back uh, and relax a little bit, uh, but we'll see where things go. Uh, you know, this is, this middle school for life. Uh, I've been able to match up uh, what's going on. There's a vortex coming in, so I'm watching that coming in. I'm watching the temperature temperatures drop. So my hoodie's on. I got my gloves on. And do this again, sort of uh, and see the right hand. This allows me to correct the orientation of the video uh, if it needs it. Uh, what was I going to say now? So we're off to uh, uh, Yowie Vlogs and the YouTube stroll. So see it inside in. Oh, a couple of hours. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.